In this video, we're going to cover an inventory cost flow assumption, FIFO, which means first in, first out. Hey there, my name is James, you're watching Accounting Stuff, and today we're continuing our How to Account for Inventory mini series. It's gotta be a better name for it than that. So far we've covered cost of goods sold and the perpetual and periodic inventory systems. If you missed either of those, you can find them linked up here and down there in the description. Today we're moving on to another hotly requested topic, inventory cost flow assumptions. By the way, if you hear any squawking, there's a really noisy cry out there and I've tried telling it to be quiet, but it won't listen to me. Anyway, there are three inventory cost flow assumptions that you should be aware of. FIFO, LIFO and AVCO. In this video, we'll be doing FIFO. I'm going to show you a four step process to calculate cost of goods sold and closing inventory using this method. So let's get into it. When do we need inventory cost flow assumptions? Let's think back to our inventory calculation from the previous video. Opening inventory plus additions gives us cost of goods available for sale and when we subtract our cost of goods sold from this, we get our closing inventory. Now here's the thing, up until now, we've assumed one constant cost price across all of your inventory. But in reality, this isn't always the case. Your opening inventory might have cost you $2 per unit, but your additions might cost you $3 per unit. So your inventory on hand or your cost of goods available for sale could be made up of a whole mix of two and $3 units. And when you get around to making a sale, you need to work out how much of this cost needs to flow out of the inventory account in your balance sheet into your cost of goods sold account, an expense account kept in your income statement. And also, how much of this cost should remain where it is in your closing inventory. To work this out, you can use cost flow assumptions. Cost flow assumptions are rules that help us estimate what these cost flows are. These are assumptions, so they don't necessarily reflect the reality of underlying transactions. There are three main types of cost flow assumption, FIFO, LIFO, and AVCO. First in, first out, last in, first out, and the average cost method. In this video, we're going to concentrate on FIFO, but I'll be covering LIFO and AVCO in the near future as well. So if you'd like to see that, remember to subscribe. Okay, so FIFO. First in, first out. What's this all about? When you make a sale using the FIFO method, you make the assumption that your oldest inventory is going to be sold first. Your oldest inventory is what you bought first, so you're going to imagine that you sell it first every time. First in, first out. But how do you account for this? I think it's time for an example. Business is booming in the window cleaning industry. Word of this catches your ears and you decide to get into wholesale buying and selling squidgies in bulk. Yep, that's what these are called, squidgies. It's the beginning of November and you have 220 squidgies in your inventory. You bought these for $2 each. On November 5th, you buy another 400 squidgies for $1,200. And on November 12th, you sell 500 squidgies for $2,750. Question. What's your cost of goods sold and closing inventory for November, assuming that no other transactions have taken place and that you're using the FIFO cost flow assumption? First in, first out. To help you get to the bottom of this, I've put together four steps, which we're gonna run through now, but you can also find them on my cheat sheet. You can help support this channel by buying it on my website. I'll link to it down below. Step one, draw an inventory cost flow table. What on earth is that? It's a table made up of five columns, date, description, quantity, cost per unit, and total cost. Okay, step two, enter what you know. Here's where we use the information given to us to fill out as much of this table as possible. So let's do that. You began November with 220 squidgies, which cost you $2 per unit. So, on November 1st, you had an opening inventory made up of 220 units, which cost you $2 per unit. A few days later, you bought another 400 squidgies, which cost you $1,200 in total. We'll add that to the table as well. 
On November 5th, you made additions of 400 units, which cost you $1,200 in total. In an inventory cost flow table, you want to leave an empty row beneath every addition or sale. This is where your subtotals are going to go, your goods available for sale or your closing inventory after the final transaction. It will become clear why in a moment. Okay, finally, on November 12th, you sold 500 squidgies for $2,750. So, on November 12th, you sold 500 units, which needs to be negative because you no longer own these squeegees. The sale reduced your inventory on hand and you sold these for $2,750. So we'll deduct that here. Hold up, wait, we can't do that. You sold 500 squeegees for $2,750. This is the revenue that you made, not what these squeegees actually cost you. So we can't enter the $2,750 into your total cost of goods sold. We'll have to work this one out. We're also going to need to work out your closing inventory at the end of the month on November 30th. Which brings us on to step three. It's time to fill in the blanks. There are a couple of things to be aware of when filling out a cost flow table under FIFO. We'll need to calculate the cost per unit of your opening inventory and additions but you can ignore the cost per unit of your goods available for sale, goods sold and closing inventory. We'll start off by calculating the total cost of your opening inventory. You began the month holding 220 units, which cost you $2 per unit. 220 multiplied by $2 is $440. Next up, we have to work out the cost per unit of your additions. You bought 400 units, costing you a total of $1,200. $1,200 divided by 400 units is $3 per unit. That's quite an increase from the cost per unit of your opening inventory. Something to bear in mind when picking inventory cost flow assumptions, but more on that soon. Now, we'll take some subtotals to work out your goods available for sale. 220 units plus 400 units is 620 units available for sale. And $440 plus $1,200 is $1,640. Your total cost of goods available for sale. Remember, I said that under FIFO, we can keep the cost per unit of your goods available for sale and goods sold blank. That means we can move on to working out your total cost of goods sold. Here's where FIFO comes in. First in, first out. You sold 500 units, but what did it cost you? Well, under FIFO, the first units you bought in are the first to be sold. You had an opening inventory of 220 units, which cost you $2 per unit, but you still need to sell another 280 units to reach 500. The next 280 units come from your additions, which cost you $3 per unit. So here's our workings, 220 units, multiplied by $2 is $440. And 280 units multiplied by $3 is $840. 440 plus 840 is $1,280. This is your total cost of goods sold. Nice work, that was the hard part. Now let's take some totals to find out your closing inventory on November 30th. 620 minus 500 gives you 120 units and 1640 minus 1280 gives you $360, your total cost of closing inventory. Step four, calculate your total cost of goods sold and your closing inventory. Well, like I said, the hard part is over. Your total cost of goods sold for the month can be calculated by adding up your cost of goods sold for each sale. Here you've only made one sale, so your total cost of goods sold for November is $1,280. And the total cost of your closing inventory is $360. The inventory cost flow table makes it easy for us to work these out. And if any of this looks familiar to you, it's because it mirrors the inventory calculation that we had up earlier. So why would you choose the FIFO method? Well, it's one of the easiest cost flow assumptions to use in practice. 
And in an inflationary economy where prices are rising, the cost of your inventory might be going up like it did in this example. So choosing FIFO can make your profits look bigger because you're matching your current revenues against your older, cheaper cost of goods. Revenue less cost of goods sold is gross profit. And as you can see in this example, your gross profit calculated under FIFO is larger than your gross profit calculated using the LIFO or AVCO methods. But as a business owner, this isn't necessarily a good thing. High profits can mean high taxes, which can negatively impact your cash flow. So if possible, it's worth considering the last in first out or average cost methods. In my next two videos, we'll explore these. You can subscribe to Accounting Stuff so you don't miss out on those videos. I'll drop both of them in the playlist over here as soon as they're done. Like I said, I've created a cost flow assumptions cheat sheet which you can find here as well. See you soon.